Can you hear me? No. <laughs> no. You can just speak. I cannot hear. You can just speak, please. Just speak. You can speak. We can hear you. Okay. Would you start with your okay. speech? Yes, yes, okay. I can speak. Yes. Yes, thank you very much. Okay, so I can speak, but somehow I cannot hear now. Okay, so I cannot hear them. They can hear me. Yes. Oh, so I can start. Yes. Um, yes, what if you can close the door? I can speak. So yes, I can speak. And if we can go to the first slide, from telework to cyberwork. Patel has just spoken about very big and complicated problems associated with this big virus. I have spoken to people all over the world about the problems with this virus. And they all tell me that life has changed so much. They ask, when will life go back to normal again? And the real answer is, it will not go back to normal. This virus has only accelerated a few very important changes which have already started. And the biggest changes involve the internet. Human life is being changed already by the internet. Patel showed us a picture with dollar bills and Rambini all of this currency. Human life for centuries has revolved around dollar bills, currency. But now it is changing because now it is the internet. The changes we are starting now with the internet are much more dangerous than the virus, but there are also ways we could make them positive. The dangers are much larger than most people will tell you. I know about this because many years I led the most advanced research in the world on this slide. In my last year at NSF, I was leading the research in three areas. One of them is the new artificial intelligence. With artificial intelligence, we were doing things 20 years ago which some people say are impossible today. 10 years ago, there were big textbooks in computer science which said machine learning could never solve certain problems. We had solved them already 10 years ago. And now, computer science is discovering we can do many things with artificial intelligence that we used to think that they used to think were impossible. But there is work within the research community, like the National Science Foundation and IEEE, which is far beyond what most policymakers think is possible. But there are scary things which are possible. On this chart, I remember a time going to a meeting with Congressman Trent Franks. He was the chairman of the committee in the US Congress dealing with future threats to the United States and the world. I remember in a small meeting with him, he said this was a very scary job. Every scary piece of information about the future would come to him. And it was all, well, not all of it secret, but a lot of it was secret. He said he could not sleep for six months. He said, you people may be worried about the future, 
If someone tells you, don't be worried, I tell you, you should be terrified. Because if you knew the information, you would not believe the reassurances. Many people are paid to make you feel good. Many people are paid to make you not worry. But the real technologies which are coming are much bigger than the ones people are worried about. So if we could switch the slide to the next slide. Next slide. Okay, good. So there are two policy communities thinking about artificial intelligence in the internet and the future of the internet. There are regulators and lawyers. I have seen the regulators and lawyers. I know what they are doing. They are working very hard, but they will never tame this beast because the problems which are coming require changes in design. We do need regulations and treaties, but they will never be enough because the design itself will decide what is possible. On this slide, you will see what some of the worries are that people have. Now, many people are worried about fake news, false reporting, hurting the politics, causing conflict around the world, or maybe causing too much obedience sometimes. But false news is part of it. But another problem is people may lose their jobs. Many people have lost jobs due to the virus. But the Millennium Project has been done studies all over the world. And even the optimistic studies say 70% of the jobs we have today will go away. There are theories about how we can solve the problem, but it will be a massive change, much bigger than the virus. And it may be bigger than 70%, because the people who estimate that don't know the AI technology the way I do for running that program in NSF. Almost any job which a human being does, almost any job we could replace with internet and computers, the technology is coming very quickly. There are bankers who think, oh, those truck drivers will lose their jobs. They don't realize there are stronger computer programs to replace the bankers and the lawyers than there are for the truck drivers. So it's, it's a universal problem. So there are problems with jobs, there are problems with data, there are problems with terminators. There are people who may tell you, Scary movies like Terminator 2, those are all science fiction, don't believe them. We could never have these kind of weapons like the slaughterbox. But actually, the technology is more developed than that. I have seen it. Maybe I am guilty of some of it. I have developed some of these tools. But all of these problems are all coming together. It's one system. And the only way to prevent these really bad problems the only way is to find a new approach to designing the underlying internet system. It's not enough to have regulations. We need design of a new kind of an internet system which serves people. There are many lawyers trying to write laws for the internet. Only a few big groups are designing the new system which will change the world. And the new system is what matters more than anything. So the next slide. There are maybe two to four big groups really designing the future, designing the internet of the future. And the two biggest I usually call Godzilla and King Kong. Because people are designing new internet systems to win, to control, to manage. Maybe the biggest is China. China is developing new currency and new exchange procedures, which may make old fashioned money obsolete. If you think bankers and financial arrangements will solve the depression, no, 
It's a new money system for the world. And it is also military, it is also observing human beings, it is also controlling the workers. I have often wondered, does the Communist Party care about the workers? Whatever happened to the workers? Uh, I have heard stories of students in China who were reading Marx and saying, let us empower the workers. And then they were informed by the military, no, no, we're not that kind of communist. We're not the kind of communist that empowers workers. Well, we need a system which does, and the United States needs it too. So now my most important message, the most important message. We could have a terrible future due to conflict. We are now moving towards a terrible future due to conflict. The best hope I know of saving us is you, you in South Korea. Because South Korea has certain unique advantages in the whole world. One advantage is South Korea knows the situation is difficult. You know there are difficult conflicts. You know it requires using your intelligence. Knowing that is a crucial advantage. It is crucial to know the problem. But the other thing is you have technology, you have science, and you have connections. You can understand the system in the United States and the system in China. And that puts you in a unique position. So the next slide. Of course, the design of a good new internet is a complicated technical challenge. I know I should probably not speak as long as it needs. I will give you citations. But what I have shown on this slide, this is how South Korea could become the lead coordinator for a new global internet design. Of course, in partnership with U.S. and China, and I know many people who would like to work in partnership, but Korea has better advantages for being the center of it because of these connections you have with U.S. and China, and Samsung, and KIST. I have visited these places. You have great advantages for all four of these boxes. These are systems which must be developed. This chart, this is not like a politician chart. This is a system design. It may look simple, but this chart is a roadmap to the future, which must be studied and implemented. On the upper left, we need sustainable intelligent market design, which has to do with cyber currencies, free speech information, ways of bringing information together. This is a complicated subject, but I know how to fill this in. There is advanced neural network mathematics, which is useful to the understanding of truth. The computer scientists know a lot about language, but truth is more complicated and requires more advanced mathematics. We have that mathematics, and you in Korea have the basis for understanding and working with it. We also need operating systems. There are dangers with hackers and quantum technology, and there are autonomous weapons. We need cooperation with China and the US. So this is the basic idea. I know I have to be limited on time, but actually, these four boxes need to be coordinated and developed in great detail. And I do hope I do hope that Korea can build on its unique capabilities because the whole world depends on this. This new product, this new internet design is important for all of the world. Uh, let, me, let me just jump to the last slide quickly if there is time. Okay. The next slide. Okay. Um, Oops. Ah, we jumped ahead. Okay, so there are many paradigms in design of the internet. 
When I was at NSF a few years ago, people from big corporations had a plan for the internet of things, for the future of the world. I have seen what those companies were planning, and it was frightening. The plans on the left, there was an old plan called Watson, which is very scary. There's a new one, just as bad. But on the right, there are tools, mathematical tools, scientific tools. If we use these new tools, we will have some hope to build a better system if we cooperate and work hard to design and build a better new internet. So, next slide. Okay. This is the same as before, but more technical. Uh, we have neural networks. Someday, if you learn what is U, what is J, what is noosphere, these are all critical to implement this grand design. So the next slide. So in the end, I have said some things you have not heard. I only say them because I know this technology. But why should you believe me? This slide is the most important slide if you really want to pursue this further. The most advanced new technology coming in AI will be discussed next week at a meeting of the World Congress on Computational Intelligence. And if you ever click on this link, you will see the latest overview of the advanced research. This goes much further than anything you read in the press. This will tell you the most advanced work. The people who fund AI research in the US will be speaking, but they asked me to give the general introduction of what the future will be. If you want to know what the future can be for the really advanced technologies in AI, this conference will give you the link. Also, on YouTube, I have done some videos before. One in Korea. Uh, if you look at, search on Wormos AGI, you will see a talk in Korean on the policy challenges. Um, and furthermore, at the bottom of this slide, um, well, these are good enough. Uh, thank you for your patience. Thank you. Can you hear me now? Wait. Can you hear me? I hear a little bit. No. A tiny bit. Can you hear me now? Wait. Can you hear me? I hear a little bit. No. A tiny bit. The volume is very low. I can hear a little bit. Oh, I'm sorry. Can you hear me? Just a little. Very low volume. Thank you very much. I told us. See you again next time.